Happy Thursday evening, everybody. Welcome to the Keep On Wrenching live stream. Hanging out, did a little switcheroo in the shop. So we got a little couple different angles going on tonight. Happy that uh, we got people piling in here, man. It has been an awesome, awesome week. <laughs> Kicking off the live stream with a new subscriber. Firing off the MacGyver emote. How awesome is that? We got Super Greedy Boy just subscribed to the channel on YouTube. If you haven't uh, subscribed yet, be sure to head on over there, man. Go head over to the YouTube channel. Guys, we are so close. I think we're 97 subscribers away from the 10,000 mark. Tons of content hanging out there. Oh God, it's got to be 200 plus videos at this point, restoring these old motorcycles. Um, also, don't forget about the Keep On Wrenching group. If you haven't gotten involved over here yet, please go do that. Come join 467 fellow Keep On Wrenchers, uh, people sharing their music, which we had some really awesome suggestions last night. I was just kind of curious what some of the what some of the people are listening to in the shop. So uh, let's take a look at some of these answers here real quick. We got the Almond Brothers pumping in the sh in the shop. We got some Tchaikovsky working, Metallica, Nine Inch Nails, Quick Cake going the distance. I can see that CD in my head. And people were just sharing freaking songs last night. We had a good time. Uh, Vika, she got her shop all cleaned up. She's got room for three bikes in there. Really, really easy. Uh, clean workspace is uh, is a wonderful, wonderful thing. And then look at this nastiness. Vika, what the hell was going on there? It looks like a pecan pie, like the in innards of one of those. Yeah, it was just chilling in Evaporust, so I can think maybe gas and vinegar residue from tank treatment with the Evaporust. I was shocked to say the least. I would be shocked as well if I seen uh, something like that. Uh, but making progress one piece at a time, that's really the, the motto. Um, tons of stuff here. Let's see, David Ellis, 60 degrees where he's from. Uh, he got his bike out. Let's actually take a look. Gotta love it. Get to the Keep On Wrenching community group and uh, share your videos of your builds. Joseph's working on carburetors. Those, those look really nice and clean. Pumping those through. And then uh, CMSNL, man. I've never actually ordered anything from CMSNL, uh, but Jacko, uh, active member in the group, uh, got a bunch of parts from him. And uh, he looks pretty stoked. Some high quality parts. These look really, really, really nice. God, look at that rim. Oof, you don't have to do much to that to get that ready to rock and roll. Um, so yeah, and I guess the shipping was really, really good. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need to like give them a try. I want one of those key rings. That looks freaking badass. I want one. Um, but yeah, so CMSNL is something that uh, I've, never, I've never really bothered to, to, to muck around with. Ron's in the chat. Hello, Wall. Hello, Ron. Thanks for joining the live stream tonight. We've got projects, projects, projects. Uh, Michael, you got your sticker this week. I put it on my toolbox right next to my Honda sticker. How freaking cool is that? Yep, got those in the mail. Well, was Monday a holiday? One of the holidays, whatever. I think they went out Monday or Tuesday. I, it was one of those days, so I'm glad that your sticker found its way to you. If uh, you haven't uh, requested or received a Keep On Wrenching sticker yet, all you got to do is head over to keeponwrenching.com. All right, down at the bottom here in the white space, Bottom, there's a form fill out to get uh, free stickers right here. And I'll get those out. I try to ship them out once a month. So uh, you might wait a little while to get it. But, you know, good things come to those who wait. Um, also, if you want to support the channel, if you're around, feel free to head on over to that merch store. Uh, grab yourself a T-shirt, a mug, cap, sweatshirt, and get a gator. This is my favorite, though, this mug right here. This thing's a beast. Absolutely love it. Um, not required, but much appreciated. And uh, yeah, check out the site, building little things here and there, uh, just trying to get the damn thing going together, man. But this 10,000 mark, man, we are so close to the 10,000 mark. Um, if I think about, if I look at analytics and I think about how far we gotta go, um, I think uh, we should possibly, we could possibly have it uh, within the next week and a half, 10 days or so. So cross your fingers, share the channel, help us get to that 10,000 mark. I think that would be awesome. Langfar, he did the same thing, got that sticker on the toolbox. I love seeing the keep on wrenching stickers um, right there. That's what you can get. Get yourself a keep on wrenching sticker and put that on your toolbox. Share a picture, uh, take a picture of it, throw it in the keep on wrenching community group. That would be 
awesome. I gotta, I gotta compile that and make an album because seeing the stickers out in the wild is uh, pretty fun. Pretty fun indeed. All right, what we got going on? All right, camera A. Ah, I've been tiring into the CB77 and really trying to familiarize myself um, with what's going on here. So in the bottom end of the uh, CB77, the 305, the Honda 305, there's actually your oil pump. We're looking at the bottom of the engine right here. And the oil pump actually um, slides up inside and it makes contact with some gears up in there. It's going to be impossible for me to show you that. Um, there's locator pins. It's kind of impossible to put it in the wrong way. Um, but there it is. Didn't even know. I was actually just cleaning the motor and noticed that there was this panel there. Then I dove into the manual and I was like, well, shoot. Well, look at that. Uh, let's go take a quick look down here. Got my gasket surfaces all nice and clean. And oh yeah, you can see up in there. There's a little contact gear underneath that cam chain um, right underneath there that drives that oil pump. So uh, God, look at those gasket surfaces. They came out pretty darn good, good enough for me. Um, there's a whole sandwich of different uh, gaskets and things that go onto this. So I don't know, I was really careful. Um, I also drew myself a little diagram of where all those bolts came out of. They are different lengths. All of these are different lengths and things. So you're gonna wanna watch that. Just draw the shape and poke the holes and get the bolts kind of stuck in there. I think this weekend I'm gonna dive in. I think I'm gonna dive in and start getting to this 305 because spring is coming, man, it's March. Where'd February go? Where the heck did February go? It absolutely flew by. And now I've got kind of a May 1 kind of goal date, May 1 to maybe have the super hawk ready to rock and roll. So I gotta get busy. I gotta get going on some stuff. Jacko just joined the stream. Jacko, good to see ya. Happy Thursday night. Great to be here. Hello, Brian. Awesome. Up to 13 viewers in just a few minutes of the stream here. Welcome. Uh, again, I want to get some stickers out there if you don't have a sticker or maybe you need another one for your car or your boat or your motorcycle. Uh, head on over to KeepOnWrenching.com. I'll get those over to you. And then we got this other project over here. That little Super Hawk is just waiting for a motor. Just waiting on a motor. That's it. No big deal. Right, we're just hanging out. Sven is in, hello from Denmark. Nice to be joining the great Keep On Wrenching community and wonderful live streams. Great to have you here, man. Thanks for joining in. Do you have a pin on the map yet? Sven, where are you at in, Den in, in Denmark? Where are you at? We do have the Keep On Wrenching map. Um, so we could get you added to that. I'm not sure if I've got you on here yet. Let me spin you around and get you panned up here. There is the Keep On Wrenching map love to get your pin added to that let's find let's find denmark where are you at man let's get you in here um let's see how much slack do i got on this camera not a lot tim for the pin oh tim for a time oh time for a pin yeah yes oh my god i can barely read my brain is absolute mush pat welcome to the stream good to see you good to see you yeah throw that out there Michael Bloom, Ford makes the best gasket remover that I've ever used. ZC30A is a Motorcraft part number. Let's see if we can find some of this. Let's see, let me see if I can, if I can effectively use Windows. I think I copied that. RTV just melts away. Oh my God, gasket surface cleaning is a miserable, miserable endeavor. I'm not a fan of it at all. Let's hop over, let's see if we can find some of this stuff. All right, let's go up here. Let's open a new window. I remember how to paste. There it is. Here it is. Here it is. Is this the stuff? eBay, let's open it up. Take a look. Silicone Gasket Remover ZC30A. This is the best stuff. The best stuff, according to Michael. Michael is saying this is the stuff to get uh, gaskets cleaned up, man. It, it took a while, man. It was a, an endeavor to get some of these cleaned up. Um, no other description going on here, but it looks like for about 10 bucks on eBay, you can get yourself a can of that. There she be. Oh, there, oh look at that little fancy zoom we can do. How fun is that? Huh? How fun is that? Ford Motor Company, just as Michael said. So, all right, all right. It's doable, it's doable. Let's go back again. If you haven't already, go get that sticker on keeponwrenching.com. All right, up to 16 viewers now. 
Sven, don't worry about the typos. No big worry. Doc Jones, welcome to the stream. Good to see you. Awesome to have you tonight. Uh, Sven, uh, sorry for the typos. It's in the middle of the night here, 208. So sticky fingers, no worries, man. You're a warrior, 208 in the morning. Um, thanks for being here, man. I'll try to keep it upbeat, keep it snappy maybe. Um, so you have a good time, but um, man, uh, let me know where you're at and we'll actually search and we will put you on the map, man. Just let me know what city and I'll get her pretty close. Super Hawk. Super Hawk. <laughs> this thing, I just love just coming down here and just like looking at it, to be quite honest. Um, frame up. You guys have seen it all the way. Look at that. Tom Foley just joined the stream. I'm just showing off the Super Hawk. No big deal, Tom. Happy Thursday night. Yeah, there it is. This thing's clean. This is the cleanest uh, bike that, I, that I've done um, in a long, long time. Toronto, Canada. Jason, Toronto, Canada. Not too far away from where the Keep On Wrenching Garage is. Let's get you a pin. Let's get you a pin in the map. Toronto, Canada. Jason, let's get you on here. All right, let's get the camera. I'm going to go fly around a little bit. In the, in the keep on wrenching private jet. And we'll go look for Toronto. We got Toronto right there. Let's go ahead and drop that in. Is that going to be good? That looks like Toronto to me, man. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to the map. How fun is that? I love the map, man. I'd love to add a Denmark pen if we, if pen, if we can get in, in on it. But uh, yeah. Whew. All right. Yeah, U.S. is starting to fill up. We got some... Got some pins filling up that spot. All right, yeah, if you're new to the stream, just let me know. Let me know in the comments. Let me know what town you're in. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll get a map, <laughs> or we'll get a pin in the map for you. I think um, most of you, hopefully you've seen someplace. I didn't really post about it too much. I made a little video, which I kind of want to watch here in a second. Um, but uh, I fell victim to purchasing another bike uh, this last week. Um, really awesome bike. Uh, one of the goals of the channel, if, if you don't know, is uh, to go older. Um, you know, I just, I don't necessarily want to get newer bikes. I want to get older bikes. And uh, this book that I picked up, I showed it off last time. The uh, Enthusiast Guide 59 to 85. My kind of goal is uh, like probably like, man, if I could get 59 through 72, in Honda motorcycles, 350 and below, like get kind of the really cool ones, I think we'd be sweet. Um, so I ended up picking up a uh, 1965, 1965, I don't even remember now off the top of my head. No, 66, it's a 1966 CB160. All right, I made a little video on that on YouTube. I'd like to just kind of pop over and watch that because this will be um, one of the next projects that we see on the stream. I'm super excited about it. So let's just check this out. So I've got my essay oh, written, they get their and I've been working on it for on about a channel. week. Go so now I'm going to show you how I use grammar. Edit essays. Go away. All right. Well, I did it. <laughs> we got ourselves a 1966 CB 160 in the garage from Marketplace, super excited. There's a good story that goes along with this bike. And uh, I don't know, it's officially Such a cool here. Bike. Hey Buffers everybody, Roche, at BB cool. Matson here, let's welcome one more to the Keep On Wrenching Stable. We've got ourselves a 1966 Six. Honda. CB160. I always recommend watching my videos at 13,697 miles on the clock. <laughs> super excited to have this one. This is a cool bike. It's like almost like a mini Super Hawk, right? We're working on that CB77. And here you go. Here's my little mini Super Hawk. All of that looks so what familiar. Do you guys think? Let me Looking know in the comments, man. All this. Super, super excited. It's mostly complete. Mostly complete. It is missing the side covers, which, done a little research, not cheap. But we'll find a set of side covers for it. And I already procured an engine cover for the side of that. Let's see, what are some of the details, fun details? It had a permit 
in August of 77. So in 77, it was probably rolling down the road. Last registered in 77. Looks like there's just a battery missing. Rear wheels like we might be able to a little rough see what's on. going on. We'll see what we can do with it. We'll find out. Gonna need new air filters. But man, both the carburetors are there. Boots are there. Oh, that's their engine. Ugh, God, what a mess. Look Ooh. at that. It, it, I wonder Linkage if that top head is, that head cover's leaking a we'll little. see, but man, check this. Three engine's free. Though, guys, that motor Engine's moves. free on it, which is so huge. It and Which is amazing. actually amazing, because there are no spark plugs in this motor. And uh, the guy I got this from is smart enough to dribble a little oil down into the cylinders once in a while. Please, more people that. do that to your stored bikes. Mm, that styling, that, that 60s Honda styling. Just gets me every time. I love this early 60s. Another style. little plus. We do have an intact, scratched up a little bit. When I was going to say, like, on that light and the seat is in really good shape. Other than we got one little. You went to here, NIU, and I saw one more other little puncture that needed to be done. That with. Northern Indiana but University. That's super minor. Tom, is that in Northern shape. Indiana tank. University? I think it's going to be fine. I think this stuff will clean up just fine. We'll make this look all beautiful. Inside the tank has me questioning that's a little bit. That's what we're going to deal with tonight. I want to get vinegar in this tank in there as soon as down. possible. First thing. White vinegar. Fill it up with white Jones. vinegar. Let oh her sit god. for a week. Shake it every day. Oh my god, what does that sound like? See where Let's you end up. That. But it doesn't look too bad. Can I even do that? Everything's here. Bars are roached. Oh my god, we can. Okay, here bad. We go. Doubt that this is going to be salvageable. It's like something was well. Like somebody cut out oh a god. center bar. These can't be the original bars. Actually, Just it was wondering. somebody cut the CL bar off of it, or it like... broke off, or rusted off. Looks like a CL bar, Those maybe. Gotta go back and look at some pictures and see what's going on. Oh, I can't there. watch it like that. Something's <laughs> missing. <laughs> That's painful. Lens is in. I always seem to have a little ding in the top right of the headlight lens on every bike that I work on, but that just means it is where it belongs. All that was cloud silver, Honda paint. And boy, all of this looks familiar after looking at the Superhawk. There it is, a little 160. It's like twin. a mini version of that 305 on the bench. This is gonna be so fun. To add to the collection, everything's there. Everything's there. Mostly, those side covers are gonna be challenging to find. Cool. With the tank and seat off, you can really see, you know, that original cloud silver paint yeah. on that fender flaking off. Frame up, this will be a frame up for sure. This will be full sand Battery blast. bucket, everything right here seems to be in order. Got our mounts, we can restore these bushings, these rubber bushings. Let's see, we got a single coil Full here. restoration. I would like to get single it running coil. though, okay. before so I this, I wonder apart. if this is a single coil engine with an intermittent. So I think it's going to be a little different. It looks like something's missing here. I don't know what, if that's a horn mount. I don't know what's missing there. I don't know. I haven't have to dive into snl.com to see what's missing there because something's missing. Usually that'd be another coil. It looks like they have a coil with two leads here. So going. I have to find one of those. Damper. Uh, turns. I kind of did. <laughs> that gauge is so fun to get a new bike too on this one, which is stories. Win. You know? There it is. Freaking 1966. CB like that motor might be leaking 160. a little oil though. Or maybe somebody just spilled oil on it. So there you go. <laughs> Quick first look. First look video. At the 1966 CB 160 last registered in 77 <laughs> with 13,697.7 miles. Welcome to the Keep On Wrenching Garage. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe. Yeah. Also, if you want a free cool, sticker. Dude. I'm excited. I'm excited about that one. Um, yeah, the 160. What a cool little bike. Left one is really hard to find. So that's what I've kind of gathered in my initial searches for parts on that bike. Michael Bloom, Ed China does rusty tanks by filling them halfway with Evaporust, adds a bunch of nuts and bolts, and spins them in a mortar mixer until they're clean. That's one way to do it. That's one way to do it for sure, dude. Um, that'll work. I'm not going to go that route. Um, let's actually, let's get to work. Why am I talking so much tonight? Um, let's hop over here. Let's take a look at this tank off this motorcycle. All right, got to get used to my new camera placement. It's a little bit different now. Right there. So here it is. Not too bad. We'll see if we can get some of this stuff clean. I kind of want to just get it disassembled. I, I love diving into these, these old tanks and trying to breathe some new life into them. Um, these are special little creations. So we'll get these side covers off. Um, let me grab a pair of gloves here. So we're gonna start getting dirty on a Thursday night on the Keep On Wrenching live stream. Thanks so much for being here, everybody. Um, I, I, just, I look forward to these, man. You, you, you motivate me um, to get in the shop and to actually make progress on a lot of things. These streams are, uh, 
are big. Because sometimes, man, you come home from work or something and you're just like, oof. You know, but Thursday nights we get stuff done. We try to move the needle a little bit on Thursdays. So it's good to have you here. Um, this is great. So these rubber uh, side, co side covers, I love these. Um, both of them are in place on the tank. And we don't want to wreck these. So the easiest way that I have found to get these out is just a little bit of WD-40 around the edges. Just get things moist, if you will, just like that. Be kind of liberal with it. The other thing that can help a little bit uh, is just to get a little bit of heat on it. Not a crazy amount of heat, but just kind of heat it. You don't want to buy new ones. You know, it's just another part that you're going to be hunting around for. And if you don't have to buy parts, why? So I always like to just try and salvage what I got. I'll go to my, my heat gun here. I'll go on medium heat. And I'm just going to go around the edges here and just kind of heat this just a little bit. Not crazy. Definitely not high heat because you could, uh, you know, start melting things. We don't want to do that. But I just like to heat it up a little bit. It's probably never been off. You could also take the cover off. We're, we're gonna dive into this tank here for a while. I'm excited to have this one in the keep on wrenching garage. Let's get this thing in a bath. I think I'm gonna go with vinegar because I did peek inside of it and it didn't look too bad. It didn't look too bad. I'm just kind of waiting to get this to feel kind of warm. Oh, it's got to feel so good for like that old rubber, right? It's like been just starving for some sort of moisture for years. And now finally we're getting it going. Yeah. Not going to get too distracted from the Superhawk, but I do just want to spend some time with this. I think this weekend I'll be diving into that Superhawk motor and might even start putting the darn thing back together because I, I do think I'm there. And uh, thanks to uh, donations on the stream uh, last time, Patrick, uh, I did end up picking up the Bill Silver uh, manuals for the 305. And that, that is a treasure trove of resources for sure. There, I can feel it. It's getting nice. It's, it's getting warm. So now that it's warm, put that in a safe spot so that doesn't do it. And what you want to do is you want to just kind of pick a corner and pry that back. Just a smidgen. Let me see if I can get you in here a little tighter. It's like that. There's a little lip around a groove. And if you just kind of pull up and out, they should kind of start to release themselves just a little bit. This is going nice and easy so far. Fingers crossed. You can get a little tight around some of the corners. Uh, but that one just slid right off. Look at this. Perfect. Absolutely. Um, beautiful, that popped off no problem. Underneath, it's always fun just to see like what gets revealed <laughs> when you take these off, because these probably haven't been off since it was manufactured. So uh, this is awesome. Okay, put this in a safe spot. Uh, next deal, um, let's just kind of, you know what? Since that's kind of pristine, let's just take just a little bit of quick wax. Let's just take a little bit of it, spray it on there. Grab ourselves a microfiber. Let's just wipe this off. See what's hiding underneath that cover. There's just a little bit of a little bit of oxidation underneath there to break through. It's kind of smudgy. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, Jacko, got lucky on that. That came off really easy. They usually don't come off that easy, but thanks to, oh my God, look at the, look at the original red. That is awesome. There it is, the original red paint hiding underneath that cover. Just notice that, look at that. Look at the damage and the change um, to this cover just from, you know, time. Right. Um, they said it was stored. The guy I picked it up from said it was stored um, indoors most of the time. So that's a plus. Hopefully that means it's going to be easy. But uh, OK. OK. I'm feeling that. 
Um, next part is really, uh, let's get to work. 10 millimeter wrench should be a 10. Oh, it's a little bit smaller. I might, we might have a nine here, guys. We might have a nine. I hope it's an eight because I actually bought, uh, per your recommendations, I might add, these uh, ratchety things. Eh, it's a nine. I don't think that kit came with a nine for some reason. All right, well, hunting for wrenches already. Seven. Okay, so I have a seven and an 11 and a 13. All right, so Brian needs to spend a little bit of time organizing his tools. I'm surprised. God, I would have thought that's 10 mil. That 10 mil feels pretty good on there. I'm going to go with that. I think, it's, I think it's a 10 mil. I think that one wrench is just garbage. So to get this side cover off, we're just going to pull this part. Ooh, that whole, oh, oh, I'm pulling on that. All right, let's go pop it. Yeah, we turned it. All right. All right, let's take a bolt out that probably hasn't been out since it was put there to begin with. All right, that cracked free. That one, that one uh, wasn't wanting to move. Yeah, nothing's ever nine millimeter. It, it's a 10. That one wrench is a little weird. Little stubby little bolt. Little stubby little bolt holds the cover on. Oh God, I gotta get a good shot. I just, what we're gonna reveal here, what we are about to reveal is gonna be amazing. All right. Get excited, everybody. There is going to be pristine red paint underneath this cover. Just gonna lube it up a little bit. Screws for condensers are nine millimeters. These older Hondas will throw you for a little bit of a loop once in a while. All right, so I believe this should slide forward once it's free. Got it from this edge. It should pull up. If it's anything like the other ones, there we go. So I just kind of pulled forward, it slides out. All right, cover is off. All right, well, we might see if we can clean this bad boy up tonight. All right, take my bolt, put it in the cover. That's the first time. Now, all right, so this is what it looks like right now. Oh my God, Doc Jones, wouldn't that be something if it was like a, a back to the future kind of a thing where I opened it up and there was a keep on wrenching sticker there. All right, little spray wax. I love it when you remove these old side covers because the sun hasn't penetrated here, you know? And you get a, like, you're able to almost match the color perfectly. A little bit of a black stain underneath that. <laughs> okay, almost nothing done. Yep, look at that. Oh, man. I hope that's coming through on camera. Like, look at that. Look at that. All right, that's what we're going for. Oh, that shadow. That's kind of annoying. I have to, I'm still always trying to work the lights and try to figure out like the best way to do my lighting. But yeah, look at that. There we go. That's the original color. That's what we'll be going for. I always like putting the bikes back to where they were originally. The cool thing on this one too, we got the original title. The original title, man. Came out of Illinois. So there's our one cover. Let's go ahead and see if we can go two for two on this thing. Yep, Tom, I'll keep it red for sure. Um, for sure. Just a little bit of WD-40 around the edges. I just find like the, it's like a, you know, it's like a silicone or, or kind of a, it's just a lubricant. Loosens things up a little bit. Get a little moisture into it. Because you don't want to crack it. You don't want to crack that inner seal on these because... Then, uh, then you're looking for new parts or you're coming up with creative solutions to things where maybe you don't need to. Just heating this up again on medium, just low heat. Just going to get it warm to the touch. 
might as well take your time um, rather than rush through it. I, I like to just kind of go slow. I mean, if you've watched the YouTube series, you know. Brian takes his time sometimes. But uh, it's what I find relaxing, what I find kind of fun. 66 CB160 tank. Get excited. This is cool. This is very cool. Yeah, keeping it red for sure. I don't have a red bike anymore um, because I got rid of the 72 CL350. That's not mine anymore. And that was my red bike. So, but this one's a, like a like almost a cherry red. I have to. I got to look it up and see like what that paint coid was, or what the paint name was. Heating these up. Yeah, it's getting warm. Getting warm. Every part that you can get off without breaking, man, is a win. At the end of the day. Sven looks like the same red color as my CD50 back in 74, his first Honda bike. Yeah, it's a really bright red. It's a super bright red. All right, let's see if we can get underneath here. And again, you're just going to grab it and lift it up over one of these. And once you get it started, oh, yeah, this is actually nice and, and supple. There could always be something, so just take your time getting these apart, and that should drop right off of there. There's our other one. This is that ridge that I'm talking about underneath here. It just slides over all those different tabs. Yeah, all right. One, two for two on that. And let's see if we can get lucky on this and just get that. My CL is not my CL anymore, Michael. All right, let's see if we can get a good... Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it a nut crack. But let's see if we can get it. Listen. Okay, she cracked a little bit. Hopefully that picked it up. And that was a different red. It was a really almost more of a burgundy red. It wasn't like red red. Okay, what, what was the name of that paint? I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember the name of that paint. It's like crazy how some information just like slides out of your brain all right i just don't want to like scratch things up here so i'm gonna grab it from the front give it a nudge from the back rock it a little bit there we go there it is boom there we are i'm kind of curious we might have to whip out the kernel brassy tonight we might have to whip out the Colonel Brassy tonight. All right, so we're good there. Let's take a look at the underside of this thing. A little bit of a spider going on under here. Um, there is a crossover here. It looks like, though, the crossover is actually built into the, the petcock here, which is a little different. These hoses are pretty dry. Not gonna lie. See if that'll even come off there. Yeah, these are. I'm surprised, like, when I squeeze this, that it doesn't just break. It's super, super dry. Let's take a look. I'd like to get the pet cock out of it. What kind of a connector is on here? All right, so this is one of the early ones. So it looks like the bolt is actually probably inside, inside of the bowl here. Yeah, Moto. Yeah, this is off the CB160. Yeah, Michael, I did, uh, I did, I did sell it. Sold it to a good friend, though. So um, uh, it's in a safe place, and, I, and hopefully I'll get to ride it, um, you know, every year. So, all right, looks like this is going to be a 14. I believe the mounting screw for this, let me get your camera up a little bit, is inside because it's got a flat... Hard to show you. It's got a flat curve on it. Yeah, well, we're about to find out, my friend. We are about to find out whether or not we have, uh, have a bunch of pinholes or not. We are about to find that out. I think Magic 14 probably will do it. Yeah, 14 on the bottom of the pet cock. Wow, that, that was like glass. That was like nothing. I think that once I take this apart, it's dirty. Right, there's definitely a little bit of residue in there. There's going to be a seal. This is all pretty, like this is, 
the, the, this is all getting pretty familiar at this point, um, pretty predictable as far as what we're running into. But just because uh, that is the case, you know, I always encourage you to take photos of things because they do come in very, very, very useful later on. Just as a good point of reference for what you're doing, I'm going to grab the Drew, the Drew needle nose. And give this a little pull up. That is pretty dry and crusty down in here. Let's see if we can get up underneath here. I think maybe the dental pick or something might be the way to go here. <coughs> Probably end up getting a Petcock rebuild kit. Yeah, because this uh, gasket right here, there's a little gasket. This is dry. Yeah, Houston, I bought another one. I got to keep the content going, you know, because I'm getting so close to being done uh, with the Super Hunk. So, all right, there's our screen filter in there. This might be actually clean it in the ultrasonic. This might be, it, 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 it might be uh, reusable. Just going to keep laying this stuff down in the order that I take it off. And sure enough, there we go. There are the two. See if I can get you up any higher here. Bear with me. Oh my God. He man tightened this tripod. Why on earth would he do that to me? Oh my goodness, that is tight. I don't know if I can even, I can't get it with these gloves on. All right, let's see if we can get. Oh, there we go. Man, I had to get a big old wrench to get that one out. All right, let's get you up so you can see what's going on here. Yeah, well, I am maximizing all of my space for sure. <laughs> this has got to be the last one for a while until I move them. Well, once I get rid of the Super Hawk and I get that back to the owner, um, I'll have another spot open. So I guess I shouldn't say that I'm done buying bikes. All right, there's the two bolts. Those two bolts down here, those are holding this petcock in. All right, so... Probably wouldn't be a bad idea to switch over to the Deep Creep versus uh, WD-40 at this point. I think I'm going to heat a little bit. I just have this feeling that these could be uh, a little tough. 20 viewers on the live stream right now. Thanks so much. If you haven't gotten your Keep On Wrenching sticker, go to keeponwrenching.com. Fill out that form on the home page. It's at the bottom. Clearly says request stickers here. We'll go after. I'll get those in the mail just as soon as I can. Yeah, thanks for being here. This is a fun stream tearing into the CB160 from 1966. This is the tank. I just kind of want to get vinegar rocking and rolling. Uh, there's going to be big JISs there. I almost wonder if it would be worth using a small impact. But let's see if they'll cooperate. I'm not anticipating that these are going to be too friendly. I'm going to go up a size on my JIS bit. Uh, I want to find the, a good one. That one. That, that fits right in there. All right, let's try it. Uh, this could be a mistake. Maybe not. I don't know. But I'm going to try the impact. I get so many comments on the YouTube channel. It's like, dude, just use your impact. Nice firm. That turned. Get her bite. They both turned. All right, that is incredible. That, I'm just going to use it to break them free. And then I can go back. Now that they're broke free, I should be able to just pull these out. Just like that. All right, so impact or impact definitely broke that free. Really nice. Whoa, I got the camera kind of right in my face right now. All right, and then we'll get the pet cock out of here. Then we can reassemble the pet cock. All right, there it is. All right, I don't know. It looks a little bent, possibly, but it may just be that way. I have to look at some pictures. Definitely some rust. Signs of rust happening there. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just put the screen back in, just like it was. Put the screen in, 
and put the gasket back down and we're going to tighten this up and then we're going to start getting things in bags. You know, we got to do that. <laughs> Dr. Jones, YouTube said I had to buy another bike. I, I had to. I, I was running out of content because I only have like the 72 CB350. I have a 67 Dream. I have the 125S or yeah, 125S. I have the CB100. I mean, I'm going to blow, you, you guys know how fast I work. I'm just, I'm just going to blow through those. So, you know, <laughs> it's, I, I just, for, for me really, it's, um, I'm trying to go older with these bikes. So when they do pop up on the marketplace, oops, when they do pop up on the marketplace, I kind of got to jump at them because you don't see the old, old, old ones, you know, all the time. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to cut. Let's see, I'm, I'm put all new hose clamps and stuff on this stuff, but I keep it all just in case. It's good reference stuff later on, at least. Pulling out these little hose clamps. Hanging out, doing strong. Yeah, the record for viewers on the live stream is 36. I've always been waiting. I was like, when's the, when's the night that we're going to freaking blow past 36? <sighs> Junk. <sighs> junk and we'll just cut this one off too oh the pain done all right we're gonna take our pet cock we're gonna throw that into here this is pretty damn obvious what it is all right houston i'll send my 350 your way if you run out of things to fix got to redo my top end everybody's got to redo their top end huh that's what, that's what we're, we're all battling through. So here I've got those two bolts for those side covers. I'm actually going, I, I should take the time to actually label this because um, I lost them on the Superhawk for many, 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 many weeks. Um, I could not find the damn things. And I don't think I ever did. I think I ended up just making my own to put on there. So don't tell anybody, okay? It's not 100% original. The bolts that hold the side covers on. I can, oh, this is the first tag, the first tag. Uh, I can't even write, I'm so nervous. CB160 uh, tank covers. Boop. All right. And I'm just gonna drop the tag in the bag. Yeah, I just, I just wanna get at this tank. Uh, I want to know, like, how big of an issue is this going to be? And I also want to come up with something um, that's a little bit different than what I normally have to deal with. So I need to, in order to do what I want to do, we're going to have to find a way to kind of plug this, or I could put the pet cock back on. But I'd rather not because I can kind of start cleaning, you know, some of that stuff uh, ahead of time. So pet cock is removed. This looks a little sketch here. Not gonna lie. If you're gonna start seeing pinholes, ooh, this is really thin right in here. So I, I we may see a pinhole here hopefully not underside doesn't look too bad around this tube nothing's like super jumping out at me i'm a little concerned here and up in here Not ideal. Oh, there's one ding in it. I thought there were no dings in it, but there is one dinger in that. Moment of truth for sure. So a little bit of Bondo is going to be going into that. What else is going on? Here's another spot. Looks okay here. Yeah, man, it's a big deal, man, if you can get, you know, things uh, squared away. Let's take a look on the inside. Go ahead, throw this in a bag. 
Gas cap doesn't look bad. That'll polish up. That, that's good as new once we polish that up. Ain't no thing. All right. Can I? Can you see inside of here? I'm trying to look. God, it doesn't look that bad. It doesn't look that bad. Let me tilt you up and see if we can get in here a little bit. It's gonna be next to impossible to get light in there with you looking. It just looks like a black hole, doesn't it? Let me take a couple pictures and then I will uh, show you those on the screen. All right. I will turn my flash on. And let's see what we can get here. Ooh, that didn't look bad at all. That did not look bad. That looked pretty favorable. This actually looks pretty favorable, guys. Let's see if I can get you in here. So that's the inside of the tank. That's not bad. That's not bad. That's really just surface rust on that. I wish I could see this one. See, you can really see there, that's just surface rust. It's not like built up. Yeah, we could try that, dude. I'd have to turn off like 40 lights to do that. I think we just fill it up, man. Fill it up and see if it leaks. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. It's, it's um, from this view, so this is looking backwards, and that's the side of the tank right there. I wish I could find my little scope. I cannot find my scope. I put it someplace safe. You know how that works. So this doesn't look bad at all. Let's see if anything shakes out of it. Very little. Very little coming out of there. Let's do ourselves a solid. Let's clean this up. Cleaned up the other side, so we might as well clean this one up too. So I was going to ask... Um, for, uh, you know, all the wrenchers, anybody in the live stream watching this stuff, I've been trying to do this stuff, um, you know, weekly or bi-weekly. Lately, it's been more like bi-weekly. Um, but I was wondering, would you guys, do you guys like these kind of long mega streams? Or would, you, would it be more fun if when I'm kind of just randomly working on things to do like micro streams? And don't say both, you like pick one. <laughs> Because otherwise, like, while I'm doing certain things during the week, I could just pop on live for, you know, 20 minutes or, you know, whatever to, while I'm working on something. Look at how pretty that is underneath there. Oh, it's going to be cool. But would you guys be interested in something like that if I just did more micro streams instead of these, like, super, super long ones? You know, because I usually go for a couple, two, three hours at least. And I say that because it's like average view time on the stream is like 14 minutes. It's kind of the sweet spot. Just kind of looking, see if there's any, uh, you know, this almost looks like, guys, this tank was painted. I don't think that that is... I don't think that that is... Um, Clear coat. I, I thought maybe it was just clear coat or something on there, but that is such a different color. Jason Wright, short videos. Oh, man. I'm really thinking about doing that. I think it would make it a little bit more flexible um, for me, for sure, because um, Thursday, either way, I think Thursdays are, are going to have to change a little bit. Um, just because, just just for work and life and 
and all of that. So might have to change that up. <clears throat> but I was thinking, like, why couldn't I just pop on live? And, you know, if I wanted to, I could pop on live on YouTube or pop on live on Instagram or pop on live someplace else. Ron, if it means we get live streams more often, then I say short ones would be okay. Nice. Good to know. Just trying to see if I could break through. It's something on there. Because, like, look at how nice this is. It's not consistent. But either way, it'll probably get all stripped down. Or we clean it, de-rust it, see what it looks like. Maybe we, uh, maybe we just clear coat it and make it look all freaking patinaed up. All right, so here's kind of my puzzlement. My puzzlement is how the hell do I deal with plugging this? Or would it just be easier to bolt that petcock back on? I forgot about that little predicament. I do want to be able to clean the petcock while all that is going down, though. Anybody got any, any, any um, tips or tricks on that? These, these are pretty rusty down in here. I definitely would like to treat some of this for sure. Or I don't want to forget to treat that. It's just rusty. Shorts, Jack goes into the shorts. All right. Yeah, because it's like long. And, and I don't joke, it's kind of long to do a super long stream. But then like maybe once a month we do a long stream, but I do a bunch of shorts, you know, or something. So just got to find that, that balance, you know. And, you know, the shorter ones could probably be better longer term, too, because I could maybe focus on one project per thing. So it'd probably be more like search friendly and people would probably find more of them. So again, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make, make sure. More but shorter plus one. Yeah, okay. All right, well, fine. Well, okay. Well, 58 minutes. I think we're gonna call it for the night, everybody. <laughs> Tom, I used a small piece of aluminum and bun a gasket, drilled holes and used screws to seal. Jacko, I actually once put silver foil AC duct tape on the tank and it actually held fine for a week without a leak and a full tank. That's pretty impressive. I actually have some of that tape. I'm wondering. Do, 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 do. I'm wondering if we could, I'm kind of liking this idea from Tom, um, like, but I'm thinking about using the existing bolts like, this is kind of the fun stuff, right? <clears throat> Just kind of problem solving and trying to figure things out. Because I would like to, like, do an ultrasonic weekend, right, where I'm taking all of this stuff and getting it all nice and clean. That's just, like, easy, easy kind of background stuff that you can do. So if I take these, I know that these JISs here fit those two bolt holes if they want to come out of here. If they want to come out of here. Shorter streams. I'm really, actually really glad. Um, it seems like most people are kind of, kind of into that. Try using a piece of plastic sheet as gasket blocking the entire surface and use the petcock to mount it with the screws, thereby no vinegar in the petcock. That kind of what I'm trying to avoid, for sure. So I think, I think we're, we're kind of reading the same we're all reading the same book here, trying to figure this out. Okay, there's a little paper gasket there. I'm just trying to get these bolts out of there. There we go. There's little seals worth noting. There is that gasket. This gasket ain't holding nothing. Look how dry and compressed that is. That ain't going to do nothing. So I'm going to put this all back in here. And I'm just going to start thinking. It's not like I don't have like a whole wall of options um, sitting here as far as what I could do here. Yeah, look at these. How rusty that is. I'm glad I got those out. You know, I'm glad I got them out. So, uh, I like to save as many parts as I possibly can. I like to save as much as I can. Start treating things right. All right, so what I kind of want to do is just kind of build a little press, if possible. Because these are going to go in there. 
And if I could find like an old gasket of some kind, I got, oh, I got a little, ah, that stuff never really sealed anything good. I was thinking, oh, I got old tires, um, but that's probably not going to work. You know, like I say, I've got lots of, lots of options here with parts. Um, like, yeah, I mean, we've got lots to choose from here. I got quite the collection. I got quite the collection going here. Let's see. What can we use? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Um, do -ba -do -ba -do. Something flat. Something flat. Thought maybe I had an older petcock. Got like four petcocks laying here. Getting out of control. Just trying to see if I can like spy something that'll like bolt on there. Otherwise, I can definitely just bolt the petcock on there and we can move on with our life. Let's try this though. I'm trying to wonder if a rubber gasket or a paper gasket would be the way to go. Yeah, and yeah, it's kind of you're. I'm kind of working my way towards that, dude. I got an inner tube in my hand. What I have found though is that these inner tubes, a lot of times, they don't really seal things very well. They do leak. I've tried them with like other evaporust kind of kind of things, and uh, I haven't really had that much luck with it. All right. So, let's just make our gasket first. I got a little pokey thing. Where's my little, little pokey thing? Doo -doo 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 -doo. There's one. And just want to make sure it's right here. All right, cool, do that. Ooh, that's a good idea, Houston. That's a, that's a great idea. Actually, yeah, hell yeah, let's do that. Good call, I like it. I like it, I love it. I want some more of it. All right. Now, can I find those little holes that I just poked in there? There we go. Oh, my buddy. All right, there's one. Jesus. Zish. Well, that gets so small, huh? There's a shop in Sumter, South Carolina that is selling 31 classic Hondas for $5,000. Bentley's in there. See, that's, that's I, I actually set up a search the other night for one of those. My wife says, my wife hasn't, shall we say, exactly supportive. <laughs> Off-site storage, man. That's, that's, I mean, she doesn't have to know. She don't need to know. You just have a little secret storage spot. Why is this one being so hard to get through here? Come on. Come on. Work with me here. The most entertaining live stream ever. There it is. It's like, man, when you poke a, there we go, finally. All right, so we could bolt that down, bolt that down. But then we still gotta plug this somehow. So I'm wondering, just wondering if I could find something that would fit down in there. Just right that we could seal it up with, like a little pressure fit connection. I just don't feel like that's going to be enough. It's bigger than that. Huh? A freaking nipple for a spar a spoke. Um, 
you have AC foil tape, put a strip or two over it. I can definitely do that. We will do that. I got some of that stuff hanging out right over here. Yeah, this is some serious stuff, isn't it? This, this foil tape. Yeah, this foil tape is, uh, it's come in pretty damn useful, I do have to say. Just trying to think of, <clears throat> I'm not sold that this inner tube is really gonna work. That's kind of my main, my main thing right now. We might come up with the world's next great invention here though, you know? Um, well, I mean, you could, hmm. hmm. <laughs> Gotta have stuff. I've got so many of the damn like little drawers of rando parts here. Let's see. I mean, because it's got it'll probably be full for a week or two, you know. So I'll just let her sit once we get it full. Oh. Alright, so that's actually that fits pretty good. A flat magnet, not a very strong one. Not a very strong one. That could work. Hmm, gosh, it's not quite what I'm looking for. Hot melt glue would hold it. Never tried it. I've never tried it either, man. Never done anything, never done anything so risque as this. What I kind of wish I had was just a little bit of Teflon tape um, to wrap around this little doohickey that I found. It's actually a, a, a pin for a seat, for a side mount seat. And it fits in there pretty good. There's a bunch of, there'd be a bunch of room there to use a little Teflon tape on. But the odds of me finding Teflon tape, probably pretty thin. Rubber between the magnet and the tank. Yeah, Jacko, totally. That could work. I mean, but man, this stuff will leak. It's going to leak um, no matter what. What I want to do, though, I just want to find the right thing. I mean, how many hours do we waste in our, in our shops just doing stuff like this? Just trying to figure stuff out. Be like, okay, there's got to be a way. Do that. I wish this would pop in there. It's just a tube. It's not screwed in or anything. It's like a little bit of paint. Where's my rubber mallet? I'm wondering if I could get that. Like this actually feels really good. If I just tighten this up, this might just work. If I could get that. That actually wants to fit in there. Yeah. Jason, I'm, I'm reading what you're writing, dude. All right, where's my little, where's my little tappy tapper? I don't know, I think this might work. Uh, it's a little too big. I don't wanna go crazy with it. I mean, ultimately the easiest thing to freaking do It's just too big. That's not going to work. Next. Ooh, forgot about these. How big are these? Not the big enough. A little piece of wood. That's not a bad idea either. Keep them coming, keep them coming. I'm trying to see if I got a little dowel hiding someplace. That's actually a really good idea. How's this hose? That hose meets up in there pretty good. Be easy, it's just to put the damn back on, back on. I just, I'm, I'm being stubborn right now, man. Because I want to figure out something I wish I had just the right little piece of metal. I wish I, I wish I could like just craft a piece of metal that would solve this problem. What are you guys working on? You guys get itching for frickin' spring? I am. 
it's supposed to be 60 degrees, uh, 60 degrees in Michigan on Sunday. And I am thinking about cranking some stuff up. I'm thinking about spending a little time out in the garage cranking some stuff up. God, that one piece has me. It's like, man, if that slid down in there, and then we, it's not the most reusable solution in the world, but you know what? I'm gonna try something. That might have been the ticket. No. I think I should just put the damn pet cock on, man. Scored a, a JD riding mower last weekend for 100 bucks. Got it running and cutting yesterday. It's perfect. 100 bucks, that's a steal. The best uh, thing that I got, I got a snowblower for 80 bucks. And it didn't run. All it needed was the carburetor cleaned. Imagine that. Imagine that. Yeah, I feel like my only reliable solution here is to just put the pet cock back in it. I'm just not seeing the right tool for the job here. A wooden dowel. Yeah, Houston. Uh, somebody else mentioned that too. I'm trying to see if I could procure one. I'm looking. This guy could be over here. Guys, I got so much junk. It's like every month I have to go through this extreme cleaning process in here. I thought I had one. What is that? Paintbrush handle. There we go. There we go. Oop. Definitely don't want to bash up the tank. I feel like. Oh, wrench fell on the floor. That can work. That could work, and then with the tinfoil tape, you know, we might be able to make something work here. And let's see, how the hell am I gonna cut that now? <laughs> um, do, 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 do I have a cutter tool of any kind? Actually, I think I do. Let's just do this. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I'm thinking about the, putting the pet cock back in. This is pretty ghetto stuff that we're doing right here, man. Just kind of playing around. Still winter. Yeah, we're, I don't think we're done with winter yet out here. But, man, we're going to get a taste of spring. That is going to do, do the heart and mind very well, I think. All right. Well, this is annoying. Really? 70 all week? Ugh. I don't know, it's supposed to get up into 60s here. I hope it's not like windy. I hope it's just like 60 and beautiful. That's my, that's my hope. All right, I'm gonna do that. And then I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put these in. Thing. 
get this kind of over this and then over the top and then we'll tape it off. I think we'll be okay. Yeah, man, I could go for some warmth. Ouch, that hurt. Ow. God, this thing is a topsy-turvy little booger. I think this will cinch the uh, plastic down pretty good when it's when it gets there. The screw doesn't want to go in there straight. I'm pretty sure that we will end up with another big snowstorm, but I'm gonna soak that up. That's 60 degrees when it comes. Why is this fighting me? Try and hold this here. Hold on, I just gotta hold on to it. There we go. That's pretty tight on there. Not sure it's gonna hold or that that dowel's gonna work, but we got a bin that we can deal with that on. I'm not really not too worried about it. Hey, let's put this stuff to the test, man. Let's put this stuff to the test. If it's gonna stick to the surface, that's the problem. Oh boy. Might just put the damn pet cock back in. <laughs> Drew! Hey, Drew, good to see you, dude. Um, we already used the, uh, the needle nose, man. We already used those bad boys tonight. He's one of the OGs, Drew. We're just gonna put the damn pet cock back in. Yeah, this uh, surface, though, is all oiled up. That's the problem. I ain't going to get that other tape and stuff to work on that. I got to dream something up. Got to dream something up a little bit better. I think this is our best bet. I feel like this is going to be our best bet. See if we can heat up this gasket, make it a little malleable, maybe. Oops. On this thing, then we're just gonna do that. Michael Bloom never snows. Well, go you. <laughs> uh, it's actually been a remarkably, a remarkably easy, easy winter, I think, in Michigan. I got zero, absolutely zero. Mis uh, you know, no complaints. This has been a super easy winter. I think I've only had to shovel like twice. And when I did shovel, it was like nothing. Use the snowblower once. I didn't even have to. I was just mostly curious to use the new snowblower. <laughs> All right, let's put this in the off position. All right. Put her in the off position. It shouldn't leak. We'll put a we'll put something underneath it. We can get a little got a little trough or something. Give her a little test run at least. Oh, we got to plug this other. We got to plug the crossover. Oh my God, that would have, that would have blown. That has sucked. Do the other crossover. A little piece of gas line I think will work. Just fine for this. If I can heat this up a little bit. So I got a little hunk of gas line here. Mmm, then balloon. I just don't think I have the resources that I need. 
do a good job. I wish I had an old hunk of like real gas line because that would plug right over the top of this. But this should work. Come on. Come on, boy. Let's go. Come on. Should probably find the right size gas line. I was hoping I'd be able to just heat it up. Yeah, I'll fight that now too. Let's do this. I'm getting excited now. I'm starting to think kind of in the back of my head about like shorter streams. <clears throat> Doing like 20 minute blasts instead of all these like giant marathons. I think that that is a good move. Let's see, I wonder if I could just use this. Let's use this. Being try I don't want to push on this too much because these, these damn crossovers, they can like just snap off on you. All right. And then, what kind of works sometimes, just go ahead, find a big old bolt and put it in the end of it. I'm having fun just kind of dinking around tonight. I hope you guys don't mind. Just having fun, hanging out. How's that? Ah, this hose is so dry. So dry. Yeah, let's heat that up. Let's give this a whirl. I just hit it. I'm having fun, man. Man, if you're new to the stream, don't forget to go to keeponwrenching.com. Go grab yourself that sticker. If I start getting a whole ton of them, it gets me to really go and, uh, you know, get some stickers out there. So you can kind of expedite that process a little bit by requesting stickers. 14. That's ah, 12. Well, I don't know. What the hell? Here, come on. Come here, 12. Oh. What in the hell size are you? 14's way too big. All right, 13. So that's a rando bolt, 13. Uh, there you go. Plug the end of that. That's probably going to be fine. Got quite a few turns. I can go a few more. I just don't want to split it because I made such nice progress here. Michael Bloom firing off the Jack Bauer emote, donating $10 through Super Chat. Dude, that's awesome. And I will go and order some of that, uh, some of that, that gasket remover. I'm going to go get a can of that, dude. Well, I'll do a video on it um, to do that. Dude, thanks so much um, for the donation through Super Chat. You rock, dude. Um, I can't, uh, can't wait to try a gasket remover. That may actually work. Get fired up. Man, this is never such a big problem with the 350s because I have like this perfect pet cock blocking tool. Pet cock blocking tool. I need to patent I need to patent that. That was that was too good for just coming up out of nowhere. I wonder if I can get this one small enough. Be nice to uh be nice to uh, get a clamp on that because this stuff, well, it'll just leak all over the damn place, man. It'll just leak all over. It's a messy business. See, see how strong this is. Well, this is awkward. Ow. Ouch. I have to put a wrench on it. Oh, this might work. 
Yeah, that's gas on there tight. Hopefully that don't leak. Hopefully that don't leak. All right, <clears throat> that's pretty damn tight. That should be good. We got sort of secondary here. We got this pet cock is in the off position. Um, do you think I got to block this one too? I'm really not sure. Down, 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 down. Just excited to like work on this bike, man. And I think it's one that could get, you know, get rolling relatively quickly. Parts are pretty available. Um, not a huge issue there, I don't think. Already joined a couple other little Facebook groups with a bunch of experts in them on these bikes. So if you're looking for like expert uh, tutorials, this is probably not the channel for you. Um, I just kind of feel my way through stuff mostly. Got some experience though, but tonight just kind of, just kind of chilling, having some fun. <laughs> right, that was a pretty good one, right doc? Why is this one being such a booger? Why? Do your job. Go together. That one just doesn't want to go together. I, I'm betting that that cro this is for the, the other side of the crossover, which I'm betting I need to prevent that from doing things. Man, this hose clamp just its dead to me. I'm not doing that one anymore. You're done. You're out. Let's see if I got another one in here someplace. <laughs> I think these are going to be fine. This one, I need to do something with that. It's going to be a problem. I could be wrong, though. So let's just try. Give you a view so you guys can see if stuff starts leaking miserably out of here. Let's do something like that. Let's try that. Grab my box of gloves. Put that under there for now. I just want to see if we're gonna get a bunch of leaking when I go to the white vinegar. I think just starting with the white vinegar is kind of the way to go. Okay, let's see if I have my smell back. Let's see if I have my smell back. Nope, nothing. You guys have seen past videos what vinegar would typically do to me. Ever since I had that thing, I have not been able to smell anything. So weird. Ah, uh, shoot, screw the funnel. We're just gonna go for it. I'm gonna live dangerously. Uh. I'm gonna live dangerously. And let me see if I see any leaking. I think the leaking I'm seeing is actually what I just spilt. But we'll see once we get some pressure up on it. Could always use a funnel too, I suppose, but. We'll put one gallon in. I don't remember how much these hold. I would guess probably like 2.3 or something like that. That's leaking off the edge. It's hard to tell. That's one can in though. Let's inspect here a little bit. Yeah, it's definitely leaking out of this crossover. Yeah, but I bet if I turn this, I bet it'll start pouring out. Yeah, so the petcock's working. 
That's good. That stops, but I am going to need to to deal with that one, unfortunately. Kind of knew it. Kind of knew that was was possible on that. That sucks. All right, back to the drawing board. Do, 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 do. See how how uh try to dump this out a little bit. <clears throat> <laughs> this is a comedy of errors right here, man. I want to see a mess made. This is this is how you this is how you make a mess in a shop really quick. doing pretty good. I'm surprising myself right now. It's a really slow funnel. A really slow funnel. I'm not accomplishing much tonight. And that's okay. It's Thursday night. It's been a week. Tomorrow's Friday. Got the whole weekend, and maybe this weekend I'll do some of those like short streams. Ah, oh, I failed right at the very end. Oh well. Boom. Good enough. Well, I'm glad that vinegar doesn't bother me anymore because. Otherwise, I would be hurling my brains out right now. It would not be pretty. It would not be pretty. All right, Trent Spread. Hey, Trent, how are you, man? Good to see you. Thanks for popping on the stream. I hope things are good. Just got to plug up this one. And this hose is kind of... Kind of garbagey. So we'll see if we can just get this off of here. <clears throat> Might need a little knife. Split that just a little bit. What's up, Trent? What's new in your world, man? Good to see you on the stream. trying to slash it. It's so dry that that's not going to seal like, no matter what I do. So just going to get rid of that. And we'll put a different hunk of hose on it. Breakfast and beer. It's Friday. Almost Friday for me. Almost. Looks like this held. Looks like this one held just fine. We just got to tackle this one. So let's find another chunk of that hose. See if you can find a healthy piece. Let's heat it up a little bit. Excited to order, I'm gonna order that gasket uh, remover tonight. Thanks again, Michael, for donating via the super chat. Yeah, too bad about that ding right there. I didn't know that that was, uh, didn't see that when I first was looking at the bike, but that's, Pretty minor, I suppose. All right, let me grab another one of them little bolts. Ouch. Hot. Hot. Thirteen. What a rando. Random. What a good stream tonight. I, I'm having fun. I know we're not like diving into anything too uh, too heady, but I'm having fun. Kind of like part of it is just like 
Just trying new stuff. Having a little fun, allowing yourself to have a little bit of fun. Wish I had one more small. So I'm actually gonna cut this one more time. Get this, get a nice clean edge. Well, oh, there went my wax. <laughs> oh, the fun never stops, man. Keep on wrenching. Let's see if I can find a random, a random little hose clamp. That's a, oh, I have one of these. That might work. This might work for what we're doing. I'm not a huge fan of like these little spanner ones like this, but I think for what we're doing here, it might be okay. Let me heat this up. I think I got the workspace lighting pretty good. Should be pretty, uh, pretty crisp for everybody watching tonight, hopefully. Oh, ow, 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 ow. That's hot. And I want to expand that a little bit. Okay, going to Drew's needle nose. All right. Stop dicking around. Let's get to work. have days where you just don't feel coordinated like at all having one of those days right now just not feeling super coordinated oh yeah this will work if I can just get it rocked over there boom that solves that problem that should be rock solid I feel good about that the other work where's my other bin Trying to think a little longer term solution here. Let's put it. Let's put it in a in a proper tray here. That's much better than that precarious situation I was dealing with before. Now we can fill this thing up. I don't think we'll have any leaks. Any guesses on how much vinegar goes in here? It's the spec sheet on the one CB 160, 2.2, 2.4. 2 Is this bad boy gonna hold three gallons of gas? Uh, this, this one's not too bad, dude, so I'm just gonna do vinegar. Nice, cheap. I was like, what, three bucks a bottle or something at the store? So yeah, I'm just doing the vinegar. If it was like super bad, um, yeah, then I'd, I'd probably hit it first with vinegar and then evaporust. But this one, I don't think, I don't think I'm gonna have to go that hard on this. Nothing, like no real rust bits shook out of it. Again, this is the tank off the 66 CB160 that I picked up this week. All right, about two gallons almost in. Really curious. Uh, Dave, we took a little look inside earlier. Took a little look inside earlier. You could go back. That should be, I think it's spooling. You could probably go back and see that. But um, I, I could show some pictures here too again in a second. I did take some pictures of it. And kind of that moment of truth right now. to see how we do. We're going on to our third. Right? Yeah, it looks really, really great. 
it's so fun when you can reveal the color. I would say it's about like two two point three or two point four gallons that this holds. That would be my guess. I don't know, but that's my guess. Just based off what I dumped in there. I wish I had the rest of the bike down here, honestly, because it would be super fun um, to just kind of pivot away. I've been like, I've been reading so much about the Superhawk motor and trying to get all the parts and everything all figured out um, on that. I'm kind of in this weird staging part where I'm just trying to slow down a little bit and, uh, you know, just do my due diligence on everything. And then I do think, and I, the other thing too, I don't really want to work on the motor on the live stream is I do want to make a bunch of videos of the process of that because there's some holes in some of the content that is out there. How about are we leaking? We're not leaking at all. We're not leaking at all. I don't see any leaks. I'm going to set this down here real quick. I think we got away with one there. That's just from me pouring like an idiot. Missing the bucket. Because I kind of want this dry so I can kind of observe it here over the next few days. Hopefully, hopefully everything's good. All right, let's just set that down. Let that sit. Yeah, look at that red. You know, that is. Huh. It's so cool what's hiding underneath that stuff sometimes, man. It's pretty fun. Very good. And now we wait. I'll probably let this sit for a week. Every day, I'll come down and shake it. Um, like, shake it vigorously. And uh, we'll see where we're at with this. I'm going to leave it up there for now. Let's take a look at this 160 a little bit. Let's take a look at it here. Uh, PT. Hey, PT. How are you, man? Try Rust 911, a cheap alternative for Evaporust. 375 a gallon. Rust 911. Where's my pen? Do I have a pen? I need to write that down. Rust 911. I heard a rumor that uh, Evaporust changed their formula recently as well. So we'll have to see what that means. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please do go and subscribe. We are super, super, super close. Um, last check was 67 away from the 10,000 marks or oh, 97, sorry, 97 subscribers away from getting keep on wrenching to that 10,000 mark. So what I want to look at here is do CB160, uh, 160 Honda 1966 red. That is what this is going to look like. Bam. That's what we're, that's what we're going for. That is the original color on that tank, for sure. For sure. Those are cool. And like just kind of looking at the details here. Can I make this bigger? Can I just open you in a new tab? Okay, thank you. How do I open this? I don't want to sign on to Pinterest. Uh, but I do want to make this bigger. Oh, that didn't do anything. Um, there we go. See, I'm, I'm learning. All right, so it's got the cloud silver fenders. Looks like painted covers, same kind of paint scheme on everything. This is gonna have the silver side covers. Rear silver, it does have that mud flap on it again. Interesting, a little different from the Superhawk is that the bracket for 
um, the rear light, that is also red. So there's a lot of red parts. The frame is red. It does have raised bars. I'm really curious to see what kind of bars are on that. So let's go to cmsnl.com. It's like the best resource for like doing research on, on these bikes. Oh, you know, one day I'll actually get a cookie. Um, motorcycles. And let's go find the CB160. One sixty right here, and they've got one here, sixty four. They didn't change very much from what I've read. So I'm just very curious about what kind of bars were on it because they're all wrecked. If you saw the the video, bars are all wrecked. Yep. Okay. So they didn't have a CL bar on them. Do 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 do. Click larger image. This is such an amazing resource. Yeah, they're just regular. I have a set of these on the shelf. In fact, yeah, I have like the perfect set of bars that I was going to put on the Super Hawk, but I didn't end up doing so. Yeah, because there's like this weird roach spot in the bars on that. Yeah, so this is just a normal CB bar. So that's good. That's good. Let's go back. Let's see if there's any other photos here. Let's see. Can I sort photos? Tools? Size, large. Here we go. Ooh. I just love that blue. That blue looks pretty cool. That We'll do red for sure, but that does look pretty special that way. Ooh, the black. Black's, black's kind of fun, too. Let's open this one. There we go. That is a great inspiration photo right there. That is an awesome inspiration photo. Finding these pipes is probably gonna be super, super difficult. Super difficult to find that. Uh, ordered from them this week. CMS and L are awesome. Yeah, I saw your post in the in the group. I will definitely try them. I was always kind of leery of kind of working. Actually, I was talking about you earlier, Jacko. You just weren't here. Um, yeah, here's your testimonial um, right there. I've always been kind of leery of doing business with them because it was overseas, and especially during COVID, I was always a little concerned um, about just ever really getting any of the parts but it's kind of dumb now that i think about it because i was you know i was spending a lot of not getting some of the parts i got out of thailand and stuff and those got here just fine so yeah cmsnl i will definitely uh definitely give them a whirl see how they do for sure yeah Beautiful. That's freaking badass. <laughs> Honestly, it's pretty cool. Um, what else? Okay, I need to like bag up these parts. I got this, the three oh, the the one sixty parts here. And again, this book here actually is super super valuable. This enthusiast guide. It was like twenty five bucks on Amazon. Um, but there's also a ton of great like guides and inspiration here um, in this book. It gives a brief history of everything. And uh, also like just kind of baseline specifications and things like that. So it's a uh, Honda enthusiast guide to motorcycles. Uh, Doug Mitchell is the author. Uh, let's see, the ISBN. Uh, let's see, 13978-1. You can find it anywhere. Dave123, when I can't find it anywhere in the U.S., I'll order it from CMSNL. They've always been pretty quick. That's really good. That's good. Nah, Jacko, don't apologize. We all got lives. We all got lives. My feelings are just hurt just a little bit. Not a lot, just a little. All right. So we're just going to let this hang out. We'll check on this in a little while and see if we've got any drippy drips. 
But here's really the, the attention. And this is all stuff I want to make videos on, so I don't really want to dive into it tonight. Um, but we've got the whole bottom end. And, like, look at how nice and clean. Let me see if I can get my camera off the pad here. There we go. Uh, look how nice and clean this motor came out. No, this is no paint. This is just degrease and clean. This is the 305 for this Super Hawk hanging out right there. That, it's, it's really just waiting, um, waiting for a motor. Um, I'm really down to it. <laughs> I'm really, really down um, to the nitty gritty on this. Here over here, we can see, got all my gasket surfaces all ready to go. Everything's really, really clean. I'm not sure that I'm, I'm gonna, I, I might degrease it like one more time, but I think I'm gonna be good to go on that. And then I did end up painting those side covers. So these are, I, these were painted um, with the VHT uh, aluminum engine paint. Um, they were primed with the engine paint, painted, and then I did clear coat these. And I did end up baking these for an hour in the home oven. So that came out absolutely like, what do you think of that? That looks pretty stunning. Um, that's the first side cover that I've ever painted for a motor. I've always been big into polishing things. But let's see if I can kind of give you a glimpse of like kind of that contrast. We're going to see with the polish. You know, that's going to look pretty damn good. <laughs> you know, we got a long ways to go, but yeah, it's going to be painted with that, that, that uh, polished aluminum cover. Polished up some of the side covers, type one cover, and painted this is side out of that starter right here. So there's that. It's all just kind of sitting here waiting to go back together. Um, and then this is the part that I'm, I'm kind of researching a little bit. I did go ahead and paint it, um, but I think I'm going to go ahead and, and try to change this bushing. There's apparently, there's, everybody keeps talking about this bushing inside of here um, that I need to probably go and tackle. But uh, we'll get to that later. I did end up just kind of taping it off and getting it painted so it looks real nice. And then, of course, we've got the side cover. Oops, I'm dropping it. I'm dropping it. Do, 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 do. So that'll be the contrast that we have going on on that side cover there. Uh, just like that. But it's all got to go back together um, first before we get to, to some of that. Um, let's see, over here, I got everything kind of laid out, ready to start going. Um, all the rockers, all the valves are out. We've got to rebuild all that. On the last stream, we actually did all the piston rings and everything. Those are, or pist yeah, piston rings. They're all sitting there. I do need to clean the clutch plates on it. Um, that's the other thing. Oh, I did, um, been looking at a lot of things for these cam chain tensioners. Um, I think mine's okay. I've been trying to find wintergreen. Where do you guys find your wintergreen? That shined up nice, just cleaned up real good on that. Um, I can only find like little, little droppy bottles, like almost like aromatherapy stuff. Let me know where you're buying your winter green in bulk because I want a lot of it. I'm gonna get this out of the way because there's a couple of little things I wanna, wanna try get to. Ugh. One of the, uh, the uh, kind of deals that I gotta really get to is engine seals so i do have pretty much all the engine seal I, th I think i did get a complete set of engine seals um so i want to start looking at that look at how messy this this table is usually before the stream i clean up a little bit i was running in here a little hot tonight i was like oh gotta get going gotta get going um so i just gotta get that cleaned up I'm so glad vinegar doesn't bother me anymore. I would be a wreck right now. Ugh. So I gotta go through just kind of some of the, the, the bits that I've got left. 
This is kind of the last, last bin of parts. And I need to, I need to start planning because this weekend I really do want to get to the motor and start tackling some of this. The 305 is definitely a lot different from the 350. I'm not seeing a whole ton of similarities in any of it, to be quite honest. Um, that might be something we'll do here in a little bit too. I'm gonna leave that out. But I wanna get in here and start dealing with some of the parts that I've got. So when I finally figure it out, I do have the uh, gaskets for the mufflers. So they aren't like copper gaskets like on other ones. Um, they're those little rubber pieces. I still gotta figure out something to fix this chain guard because that one mount is broke. Still trying to dream it up. A part of me is just like, do I just even take and put it back on? Shifter, look at how freaking amazing. Huh. Can't wait to put that on there. Got new uh, intake tubes. So that's engine. Got my engine seals, my kick. Look how nice, God. Oh my God, it's gonna look so good. Any tips for keeping these engines oil tight when putting them back together? Um, no, not unless, uh, I think the only sealer that you're supposed to use are on the, if you split the cases. That's really the, the only thing. There's our beautiful pet cock that we restored on the stream. That's hanging out, that's ready to rock and roll. Okay, carb kits. What I wanna find are my engine seals because that is gonna be a project for this weekend. A little kickstart gear. All right, here's an engine seal. Okay, that's one there for sure. Oh, I did get my uh, tire beads. Got those from Common Motor, got a kit. Here's one of the four bearings that go in the camshaft. Here's a set of points, cam chain. So I do have a brand new cam chain that I'm going to put in it. Here's another engine seal, uh, oil seal 32 by 65 by six and a half. That's another one. How many oil seals are in these damn things? There's another engine. Here's another one, an oil seal, 1425 by seven. This almost looks like it's for the kick. Here's another one. Here's an eight by 21 by six. Oh my God, there's so damn many seals on this thing. Oop, my top cover, I forgot to paint that. Oh my God, oh, I forgot to paint that. That bums me out. Had that all set up, I was ready to rock and roll. Nice new kickstart rubber there. There's the third, and there's my fourth. So, gonna do new camshaft bearings on this one. Actually gonna go put these over here with all the other engine parts because these are important. That's gonna be kind of a stressful day. I've got more seals though. I know there's a lot more seals. There was a few of them. How many damn seals were in there though? There's the other set of points. Oh, lots of tidbits, lots of, lots of bits here. Like here are the knobs that hold the side covers on. These need to be restored. Look at that cool Honda Motor Company on there. It's like that. Those need to get spruced up, rehydrated, like I like to say. There's the old, old coils, old points. Gotta put the new points and everything in. I got a new condenser. That's oil. I know there's a bunch of, there's more, there's more oil seals here. Uh, 20, 30 by five, another oil seal. I read uh, in the Bill Silver books that all the engine seals can be replaced um, without splitting the cases. So I should be okay. Just, but I wanna make sure that I don't miss any as I start kind of buttoning this thing up. Like, look at this, this is a freaking one of the pegs. That looks freaking brand new. <laughs> and that's what I was looking for earlier is a little bit of gas line. Awesome. Um, new sprocket, or I actually ordered two sprockets for some reason. 
I got sick of waiting on one of them. So I just ordered another one. So if anybody needs a sprocket for a CB, there's a wiring. That rear brake, I haven't figured that out yet either. Yeah, it's getting down there. There's not much left in here compared to where we started. Uh, randos, yeah, rear bottom engine bolts. Those all, and here's the other seals. There's another 1628 by seven. There's a 1425 by seven. 12 by 24 by four and a half. Here's another one, an oil seal. This one has a brass ring on it. All right, so that might be what we look at today. Got a new front sprocket right there. So we'll have all brand new sprockets. We've got new engine case bolts. So we got a whole bolt kit for that as well. This thing's gonna look freaking tight. Um, it's gonna be tight. Some exhaust brackets and clamps. I think those are all the seals. Yep. So here are all of my seals. Let's go over to the table over there with those. Gotta find out how many engine seals are in a CB77. That's what I need to find out. And then we go hunting for them and we go find them and we pop them in. Not gonna split the cases on this one. Um, I took a scope uh, down inside of it and everything, honestly, it looked fine. Um, everything seems to operate and move. Not super concerned. Like this is it, this little box of like tidbits. This is it. I'm literally just a top end away from going for kind of that final assembly, that final push. So I'm pretty jazzed about that. Yeah, uh, Dave, back to your question a little bit. Um, everything I've ever seen is like you put your gaskets in dry and torque to specifications. Make sure you have really clean gasket surfaces. Spend your time, you know, on gasket surfaces. Don't skimp, you know, when you think it's clean, do it a little bit more. You know, that's kind of the main deal. Having fun tonight. Thanks so much for being here, everybody. All right, got a little bit of trash. Just going to try to clean up here just a little bit. All right. So where am I going to find information on all of these damn seals? Oh, my goodness. I don't remember the 350 having this many seals. There we go. All right, let's get organized. 14, two, five by seven. There's a big one. Here's a not quite as a big one. Here, let's see if there's like duplicates or if they're all unique. Here's this brass one. Interesting. So a 12, 25, four and a half. God, are these all different? So there's two, two of these. Yeah, and that's it. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine engine seals to be dealing with on the Super Hawk. Huh. All right. Well, that's a lot of seals. Don't you know? That's a lot of seals. Well, let's see. Let's see if we can find some of these. Get you down just a little bit. So right away, I can see one right here. And I can see two here. So there's one here. I'll get you in here. Get you in on the action a little bit. RV Essentials on Amazon. I gotta take a picture of the screen. So I wanna get that, cause I was searching all over for that, man. Oh man, somebody just did a whole ton of research. All right. $4.99. 
four one. Not seeing these four one numbers. These numbers aren't quite the same, but it should be pretty obvious. Four one two eight. I'm not seeing these numbers on these. On these. I'm going to take a picture of that too. That's super helpful. Houston, that's awesome. Um, can totally see one here, one here. There might be one under the neutral. Is one of those there? Um, for instance, one of them, uh, like one of these bigger oil seals, is 1259. Zero 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 one two five nine zero 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 zero. Actually, three zeros. One two five nine zero zero zero. I'm gonna have to do some searching. Hey, Murphy's joining the party. Hey, Murphs. What are you doing, buddy? All right. So one two. I bet there's one underneath the neutral switch. Probably wouldn't be anything else underneath there. Let's flip this motor over. Do, do, do. See what else? Ah, I want my gasket sealer. All right, what else do we got? We got a whole bunch here. Yeah, I got these from Classic Honda Restoration. That doesn't feel like a seal. I don't see a seal there. Um, one of them, I, a couple of them are going to be in the covers. So there's going to be one there, one, two. Yeah, I'm going to be hunting these down, man. This is going to be, I'm going to be diving into the Bill Silver books for sure. Because I don't see, don't see anything here. That's not a seal. I'm, I am wondering if that, the one with the, the brass, I'm really curious because people have been kind of chirping. Here, buddy, can I sit down? Come on, buddy. Oh, got a little kitty cat behind me. Hopefully I don't push him over onto the floor. But I want to try and see if I can, like, find this. Um, uh, what would I do? Honda 305 oil seal. I'm going to put these numbers in 5 200 005. Oops. All right. See, I wish they came in a kit that actually told me what they were, but they just kind of came all apart. All right, so this is it, but what is it for? Clutch adjuster oil seal. So this is going to be very painstaking to have to go through all of these, but that definitely looks like the one with the brass seal around it. They're saying that is clutch adjuster oil seal. So I'm been around there. I don't see, oh, so it's on tons of bikes. Super Hawk 60, yep, that's it. Seal goes on the end of the clutch adjuster. Oh, to keep grease coming out. Oh, okay, that's actually, that's actually a really easy one, actually. So we can take a look at that. So yeah, I'm just gonna have to kind of do each of that. Eat, do research on each one of these. So I still need to degrease this. But it's this one right here. Is that one? Yep, so there's one. Easy. Gotta clean this up a little bit. But yeah, so just kind of finding a home for each one of these seals. That's gonna be a challenge. 
it won't be too bad. Just got to do some research. And then here we've got, let me hop back over here. Let's bring it back over here. So we know we got a seal. That side cover looks absolutely beautiful, by the way. Here is one right here. This is the original. I took it out when I painted it, but it's still here. I'm trying to see if it says on it at all. But I bet, I bet it's that one, right? That's it. 1425 by seven. This is the one that had two of them. So that's one, goes right there. Anything on the inside here? Nothing on the inside there. Oh God, I got dirt on it. Oh no, come on. I tell you, baking these parts made a huge difference, man. Houston, you're, you're coming through, dude. You're coming through tonight with the Intel. I'm gonna be referring back to my own stream to get the information. This, these two are pretty easy. Those two are pretty simple, that's pretty obvious. They could be a little bit more specific on some of these. That would be really nice. One of those goes on there like that. So that's an easy one. I don't think there's another seal. Just like the 350, yep. Uh, main drive shaft, clutch push rod, Kickstarter, upper crankcase, camshaft, clutch filter, clutch lifter, shifter shaft, and tack drive. Tack drive. Mmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wonder if there's a seal there underneath that. Or, yeah, no, I think that's where that would be for sure. Bet it's under there. Bet there's a seal. God, didn't these parts come out just fantastic? They just came out absolutely beautiful. So pleased. Yeah, it's going to be great. So that's kind of a big project for this weekend, I think. Um, kind of deciphering all of this and figuring out where the hell those go. The only big bummer, man, was that uh, the, there was no clear, like, indicator. I'll take another picture of that. It was a really good chat. You guys are super helpful. I'm blowing through this stuff. Yeah. All right. I'm feeling that. Feeling good about that. So these are going to come with me. Those are all my engine seals. Put these back in a safe spot so we don't destroy them in some terrible accident. <clears throat> and then what I want to do, just for fun, for the rest of the stream, let's see if we can clean this cover up. Let's put the old Colonel Brassy to the test. Oh, oh got to shake it. I got to shake it. Got to shake my Colonel Brassy up a little bit. Love this stuff. For a first pass on anything, man, this stuff is incredible. It's just milky white goodness. It's pretty rusty, it's pretty dirty. But let's just take a pass here. Got a microfiber. I'm just gonna do a pass right down the middle here. Got to shake. I got to mix up my Colonel Brassy a little bit better. You know, pulling a little bit of material off of this. Actually, I really do want to give this a good mixy mix. That's the one thing with the Colonel Brassy. If you've bought it, um, just make sure that you um, that you stir it up really good. It does kind of settle over time. Need something kind of long. 
to get down in there. Can I get down in there with that? Yeah. It kind of settles, like the grid in it kind of settles out. So you got to kind of get in there with, like I got a, a long punch. Break that stuff up a little bit. And shake it up. I actually punctured my bottle tonight. It was not my best action. But there, that's what that's what you want. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Gotta love that. Alright, so let's hit this. It's got just a little bit of grit in it. And it really gets down into all those little nooks. Some people would say, um, you know, you could just use tin foil and Coke, you know, and like all these other things. Yes, you can absolutely use those things. I just prefer a little bit more gentle approach on some stuff here. I, I've actually found the tin foil to be a little abrasive. I didn't really like the final finish. Like, look at this. What was this, 30 seconds of work? Thirty seconds. It's got some deep scratches in it, but look at that, I can already see my Honda Bander in the back. It's got some really deep, 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 uh, deep issues there. Get a little elevation here. Get you down in the action. Like, honestly, like, if you're not, like, super picky and you just, like, want kind of a clean bike, I mean, you don't have to, like, kill yourself doing this stuff. That was 30 seconds going in, knocking out that initial oxidation. Getting down into some of these... That's why I like the Colonel Brassy, because it just it just it's just gritty and fine enough. Now you can get down into these surfaces pretty easy. And I like just that there is this patina. Oops. There's like, see the little dots? Really hard to show, but there's just these like little patina dots in that chrome. I don't mind. I don't mind the patina. Like it has to feel so good for a part like this that's just been kind of languishing to finally get a little TLC and to be like, oh my God, someone cares. Someone cares enough to like wipe the sludge off of me. It's kind of like, you know, it's like taking a shower, you know, like, you, you know, you know, like if I remember in kind of a rut, like if I'm just kind of stuck, sometimes all I have to do is just go take a shower. And then it's like when I take a shower, it's like hitting a reset button on my day a little bit. Not a long shower, it's like a five minute shower. And then you come out of the shower and you're just like, huh, new day, let's go. Just a good reset for the brain. Look at how, look at this. This is. It's insane. This is great. I love it when when products work and parts aren't complete garbage. There's some real bad scratches in that. She slid on the ground a little bit someplace one day. But already right there, I mean, we started here. You know, we're all ready to hear. We've barely been working this. Barely. So now the fun part is like getting into this part and then cutting your fingers on these parts. You, know, you slam your hand into that and then you get, get bleedy. So, I don't know. Let's just kind of finish this one up and then we'll just do like a quick 
kind of side by side. Freaking Colonel Brassy, man. Colonel Brassy. I love this stuff. Love it. Stuff just works. Just eats it away. Just got to make sure you keep shaking it. And just like that, that rust is just kind of disappearing before our eyes. No power tools, just some patience. You know, a little patience, some rags. A little moisture got behind here. There's definitely some pinholes. Hey, Doug, good to see you, buddy. I mean, this is the stuff that I love doing. I, I, I love uh, just bringing back old parts. Engine stuff, I'm not that crazy about it. I'm really not that crazy about working on motors and stuff. Like, I do it because I want to get the bikes back out on the road. But this is what I really, I really enjoy this detail-oriented part of it. Not that engines aren't, in, aren't detailed, but it's like these, the polishing and the painting and the sandblasting. And that's the stage that I really enjoy, which is why sometimes I think I procrastinate finishing some bikes because it's just like, oh, but... I have all these rusty parts over here that need to look pretty again. I think I'm going to go do that. Yeah, it just like melts away. Just working through it. This is like just kind of an initial pass. And then once you get all this rust out of it, we can bring it over to the buffer and really start working it. Um, but in a lot of cases, you don't need to, you don't need to kill yourself and, you know, have a buffer or anything. I think my first two bikes, I didn't even run a power buffer. I just did everything by hand, and it's totally doable. So of course, it's going to take you a little bit, a little bit longer. But stuff's not a race. It's not a race. It's kind of fun just knowing that you bring you know, something back like that. Like we really haven't been working on that very long at all. And we're by no means done, right? There's still work that can be done on it. But you know, when you look at, oh, look at that ding, that sucks. Well, we'll have to try tap this ding out of the side cover. But I mean, when we're starting with, you know, stuff that looks like that, You know, and a few minutes later, you can walk away with something that looks like that. That's a pretty good feeling. So those are going to clean up just fine. <laughs> I feel just fine about that. Oh, man, so much, so much to do. So much to do. Kind of interrupting the the cat right now. So, Murphy, what do you think? Is it getting too late? Is it getting too late, Murphy? Murphy's the OG. Murphy's the old oh, the OG of the house. He's a good guy. He's a good kitty. Aren't you a good kitty? Oh, he just wants to be petted. It's hard not to pet a cat when a cat wants to get petted. What you doing? You're a good guy. All right, let me finish this stuff up. All right, this has been a good stream tonight. Two hours, 25 minutes. We didn't really accomplish a whole hell of a lot tonight, but I don't really care. We, we've, had, we've had fun and we've had good conversations um, rocking and rolling through here. Let's hop over to the browser here real quick. Let's take a look. Let's see if we got any new members in the group tonight. I think we are at 467. Let's see if we got anybody new. 468, we gained a new member tonight. All right, welcome to whomever that was that joined the Keep On Wrenching community. Um, that is fantastic. If you're new to the stream, make sure you go get that free sticker, keeponwrenching.com, and uh, just fill out the form. I'll get the, that stuff over to you. If you'd like to support the channel, if you'd like to kind of rep some gear, 
Uh, be sure to hit up the merchandise store, grab yourself a t-shirt, a mug, a cap or something. All the dollars go back into really supporting what's going on here at Keep On Wrenching. Pretty simple stuff. The big one though, man, we are so freaking close. We are so close. Um, I'm gonna take a quick count. I'm gonna just check the check the old browser here and see uh, what our official count is right now. Hopefully we gained a couple tonight. Let's see, where are we at? How many more to 10,000? How many more? How many more do we need? Yeah, Doc, two hours already, right? All right, we are, let's see, 9,907. That's where we're at. Not far. We need 93. Whoa, buddy. That's not stable. He almost you all, you see that? He almost biffed off the off the box fan. You gotta go away. Get out of here. Yeah, so 93 subs away from all of this stuff. So all right. We've gone two hours, twenty-seven minutes and 12 seconds right now. We've held steady viewers all night. It's been an absolute blast. I think I'm gonna call it. Uh, I got kind of a long day tomorrow. Um, and I'm gonna really think about um, the question that got posed uh, tonight, you know, about would you rather have longer streams or shorter streams? And I think the consensus was more shorter streams. So I'm gonna really think about that. I'm gonna start thinking about ways that I can just do like maybe 20 minute streams here and there throughout the week, pop in, pop out. Uh, maybe focus on singular projects because I really do enjoy the live part. Um, live is is a lot easier for me, <laughs> honestly, than like editing videos and things like that. Although some of the videos you need to edit, especially when we get to this motor and stuff back here. But I think I'm going to think about some of those shorter streams, kind of spread the love a little bit. I could do live streams at different times of the day as well. So we can finally reach some of the people at a at a good hour, you know, across the pond and in Australia and some of these other places where we've been putting the pins in the map. So I think that's good. I think I'm gonna call this one at 228.18. Um, Doc Jones, amazing to see you. So glad you keep coming back. Doug Dill, fantastic to see you. Um, Sven, you're into the shorter streams. Yeah, and I could maybe do some of those in your time zone, right? I can start paying attention to that a little bit. Houston, big help. I took a number of screenshots of uh, your, your chats tonight. I think those are really gonna help me out. So I appreciate you uh, stopping by uh, tonight for sure. Uh, Dave123, Dave, uh, good to see you again. Jacko was in the stream tonight. Michael Bloom, um, let's fire off your emoji or your emote one last time because you supported the stream tonight via Super Chat. Fired off that Jack Bauer emote, donating $10 to the stream. We're going to go get ourselves some gasket remover that he recommends, and it better work. And I'm going to have to make another darn video about it once he does that. Trent's bread was in for a while tonight. Um, that's super, super huge. Um, we also, early on in the stream, we had super greedy boy fire off the MacGyver emote. Uh, he subscribed to the channel. So welcome to the Keep On Wrenching community, dude. That's awesome. Drew Howder showed up. Haven't seen Drew in a while, I don't think. Uh, Jason Wright was in for a while tonight. Oh my God. Tom Foley was in for a while tonight. Uh, Jason Wright, uh, guy going through this list. It's, my God, it's like the usual suspects. We've got a really, really cool little community going. Uh, Tom Foley, Moto Mango was in for a while. Um, very cool. Pat. Pat was in for a while tonight as well. Sven, of course, from Denmark. We never got a pin in the map because I never did see like what city you're actually from. You're up freaking late, bro. You should get some sleep. Um, let's see. Langfar was in uh, early in the stream and Ron uh, also kicked off the chat tonight by saying hello, y'all. Um, so that's it, guys. I am gonna uh, kind of clean up a little bit. Um, and uh, get ready for a Friday and then get ready for a weekend where I, I, it's time. It's time to make progress on that 305 engine and, and uh, start getting the Super Hawk ready to rock and roll. All right. Can't thank you enough for the support. And I'll see you in the next video or live stream. Make it a great day. Have an awesome weekend. Keep an eye on YouTube. You might see some short streams coming along the way. All right, everybody. Have a great night.